Hello there. Welcome to the Joinery Business Podcast. My name's Bruce. I'm going to be your tour guide today. And I've got a real special treat for you. And I thought I would just mention before we get going here that this podcast is actually a video podcast as well. So if you'd like to not only hear us, but see us, you can jump into our YouTube channel and see this episode. Uh, you've got a, I've got a real treat for you here today. I have been authorized to show you some of the information um, that we do in a group of ours called Boardroom. And our Boardroom group is people that have been with us in our paid programs for two years or more and are at a more advanced thinking level of thinking in business. Uh, if you're a joinery business that's looking to figure out how to get to that ever elusive level that you're really just working on the business rather than in it, that's the actual problem that we look to solve in Boardroom. So our Boardroom is a, is a grouping of, of people at a more advanced uh, level and we had a really interesting conversation with Mick and Travis from Mivis Joinery in Brisbane. They run an amazing business up there in Brisbane and they shared with us their business journey over the years. And it was a really inspirational and insightful conversation and presentation that they gave. And they've authorized me to share this with the broader community. So the reason that we're sharing this mostly is that um, if you're a, a business just starting out or at that sort of middle stages, you can get to the stage you want to get to by um, being inspired by people like Mick and Travis. And if you'd like to learn more, uh, you can reach out and, and ask us some questions. Uh, Mick and Travis have been a, a client of ours for a while now, and, and uh, they have, in, you know, to their credit, they've taken a lot of the things that they've learned from various sources and applied them in their business. And that's why they're getting the amazing results they're getting right now. So hopefully you enjoy this. This is uh, no doubt a really interesting uh, podcast that you'll find very useful in your business. And again, if you want to learn more, uh, reach out to us and have a conversation. Uh, hopefully you enjoy. Cheers. Have a great day. We'll chat to you on the other side. Tell us a little bit about your business journey. Who would like to start? Would it be Travis or Mick? I'll start. Travis. Um, so yeah, so tell us a little bit about, um, just a little bit about the history of the business. Like where did it, where did you start from? Like what, what got you to where you are right now? So we started um, going on eight years ago now. Um, our previous employment was commercial office furniture, um, mass production, as machines, beam saws, all that sort of thing. Mick was the general manager there, and I was just a tradesman on the floor. Um, we worked there for, I did my apprenticeship there. Mick had also done his apprenticeship there and worked his way up um, through the ranks to, to running the show. Um, and we worked together there for about 10 years until yeah just some financial things and the you know there was the the floods that went through um mm -hmm. we could add you know three and a half meters of water through there no insurance managed to to get it back up and running but yeah just some issues with the banks ongoing from that uh yeah into into liquidation and it was at that point that we were both mick and i were put on a skeleton staff to to sort of squeeze the last bits of work out and it was during those couple of weeks that we created um, our future goal of, of what we're what we're achieving at the moment through Mivus. Um, so Mivus, the name is is built up through the MI, obviously Michael, and the VIS is end of Travis. So that's that's Mivus, and yeah, we just started out me and Mick um, small small workshop, um, and we just pretty much did whatever whatever work we needed to at that point to. To bring money in i was very new to the business side whereas mick was sort of all over all over that so mick looked after the, the quoting um sales um ordering all of that and i was hands-on labor to to you know do physical work to get you know money in the door um and that's sort of how we sort of sort of started and yeah we had a few old contacts from the, the place we used to work and you know then just started to build up contacts um, found some found some work that helped to tick over the cash flow. We did a lot of warranty work for Masters Hardware um, early on, which was good because it sort of filled in the gaps with our joinery work. You know where we were filling out the weeks with with paid labour. Um, so we're sort of doing doing all the Masters warranty yeah. warranty jobs throughout southeast Queensland. And there was plenty of them. <laughs> it was all the all the vinyl wrap that was peeling off the doors so then we got paid to obviously go and change it over and there were certain kitchens that 
even the new new batch of products, the vinyl, would peel again. So it was it was ongoing work dealing with a lot of disgruntled customers in regards to masters. Um, but for us, it was it was paid work where a couple of days a week we'd go out and you know change over doors and you know it just helped to to really cement um, our workload or or work with our you know the small amount of joinery we were doing at that stage. So their kitchens were that bad, were they? They were basically just falling apart in a very short period of time. Yeah, it's just the vinyl wrap. And yeah, so even like the doors, you go out to, to jobs and they just have vinyl pe- peeling off. Um, wow. We're, See, the, the, what's called, the doors, the doors were getting done over in England. Yeah. So the humidity in Brisbane compared to down south or to the English conditions are totally different. So yeah. everything was just delaminating. Wow. I didn't realize that. That's um, that's an interesting way to start a business. Yeah. So it was all like it, we didn't have to quote on it. We'd just go out and we'd charge out our how many hours from the time we left the factory to the time we got back. And then, yeah, there were certain kitchens there that we, we did twice. And after the second time, they then started to replace them with a, a two-pack version. Oh, because Masters was actually replacing it with the same stuff they had in the first yeah. place. Yeah. So they, <laughs> they said it was all all fixed up and yeah, no. Nah. So that was linked through Halfway. Right. So Halfway, yeah, they had the they were supplying the panels and it was just a, a complete mess. But so that, that enabled us to to do that. And then yeah, we sort of grew grew up grew up from there. Got a got a shed from, you know, about two years in. Panel saw, like secondhand panel saw, secondhand edger. So just so that everybody's really clear, tell us about how many people you have in the business. Tell us a little bit about the factory, um, your software. You know, what have you got as, um, what, what have you got staff running the business and people? So we're at about 16 staff at the moment total um, through in-house drafters, um, office staff, um, apprentices, machinists, installers. Um, we run cabinet vision and jobman software um we're at about how many square meters here uh 1100 1100 square factory um yeah anderson cnc um yeah 3618 you know auto load auto unload he rock edge bander and yeah just sort of a, a pretty tight-knit group of guys that we're that we're working with and um, you know, trying to implement as we go the lean, the lean side of manufacturing and continuing with with cabinet vision improvements as well as as Jobman as well. Jobman's been massive for us um, over the last yeah. sort of six months to a year. You've got a really nice space, like your factory is. It's got good flow to it anyway, for sure. Yeah, it's for, yeah. It's, it's sort of unobstructed um, space, which gives us a lot of yeah, a lot of yeah. Uh, room to to do what we need to do. So tell us a little bit about before you sort of joined this group, what were your sort of business struggles? What were you looking to help, you know, help improve and solve in your business? What, what were the, the main points here? We weren't making money. No profit. Okay. Yeah. So we were running at a loss. We were both pulling our hair out and, you know, running around, not making a single cent. Now we're pulling our hair out, running around, but making money. Um, so one tick box anyway. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that, that was the biggest concern for us was, yeah. you know, we're working so hard with no reward at all. Like, yeah. We we're getting a wage, but the wage wasn't anything substantial. So, um, yeah, just a matter of doing a couple of things differently. And, you know, now, yeah, the, the difference is massive. And, and you guys, think, are, sorry, Travis? I think back then as well, yeah. With all that going on, the the enjoyment and passion that we that we have for what we do was just sort of getting zapped out of us. Um, mm. Yeah, you know, without certain procedures in place and you know dealing with clients, yeah, it was it was just a push day, every day just to to make things work. Um, so yeah, that that enjoyment as to why we got into to this business just wasn't there anymore because. It was just a struggle. Yeah. 
The other thing that we knew when you entered was you had made an investment in JobMan. Yep. That was kind of sitting on the shelf. Um, yeah. Everybody on the on the in the group right now has JobMan. Bob has had it for a while. Uh, Mario's just purchased it. Chris has got it and he's had it for a while as well. So this is a really good conversation mm -hmm. to talk about the journey at different stages with everyone. Um, you, uh, Bob, Mario, and Chris have all sort of started the journey from the beginning with us in JobMan, but you had JobMan well before entering the program. What, tell us a little bit about the transition now from, you know, like from then to now, what, what are the key things that have moved you forward with it? Um, so when, obviously when COVID hit, that actually allowed us to spend <laughs> time on Jobman. So we actually got a lot of the, the setup and that moving from that period. And yeah, ever since then, um, Mick will explain maybe the quoting side of it. So, but yeah, so Mick, Mick looks after the quoting business side, and I look after the the production side of, of what we do at Mivus. Um, from a production standpoint, having Jobman and agenda screens, where the guys, you know, our, our daily toolbox talks around our our agenda screens out on the floor is it's huge because all the information is no longer sitting in my head that I'm trying to just blurt out to the guys in the, in the morning, you know running around it's it's really clear on the screen that the boys can see the order that the things are the things are coming through and they can see see what work we've got on the on the horizon as well so it just sort of it just brings us all a bit closer because they've got a really good understanding so from a production standpoint it's um it's really clear but i think the the major benefits out of jobman so far is probably been through Mick, which he can explain a bit better. I mean, the, the quoting, once you have your, I don't know if you guys are using the quoting, but once you have a, I don't use it, I don't bring a cabinet vision drawing in to Jobman. I'd much rather um, build my kitchen through a library. Um, and the library was initially drawn in Jobman. But, yeah, so I, I bring in components to build a quote and then those components obviously have assembly, uh, machining and drafting already assigned to it. Um, so really, other than building the cabinet, or not building the cabinet, but building, say, a kitchen per se, I bring in all the cabinets, any outsourcing products, into all my lines and then all I've got to allow for at the end is the hard part in doing the estimation is understanding how long it's going to take to install because all the other components mm -hmm. are actually within each cabinet. So um, you're using, you're using your, your line by line by adding products to lines? Yeah. 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 So you're not, you're not drawing in cabinet vision and then importing that in, but that is an option, isn't it? It is an option. Yeah. Um, I, I personally... Um, have found for me, and it may be because I'm a bit more of an older style, I found that was taking me longer than it would to just go bang, 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 done. And there's, especially considering I'm getting the plans given to me by architects. Um, so it's all there anyway. I don't need to explain to anybody else what it is. You know, the plan shows a four draw. I brought a four draw in. So yeah. I just stick to a plan of the way that I work around a job to, so then when the guys see it, they actually understand what, how. Yeah, it'd be, it's actually really good to hear because I know Chris right now is at that stage as well, where we're trying to transition into a little bit more of a streamlined estimating system and bring a new estimator into the business. And um, it might be a good conversation for some point in the future for maybe you guys to <clears throat> bounce a few ideas back and forth. Hey, Chris. Yeah, definitely. Yep. Yeah. That sounds oh. exactly what we're going through at the moment. So yeah. Yeah. Cool. We, we, I brought on a, an estimator. Um, well, he wasn't an estimator. He's a, a guy which is willing to learn, which is half the battle as we yeah. know. Um, my biggest problem is one is letting go and secondly <laughs> having the time to actually teach him how to quote so 
really at the moment he's been helping travel with stuff and getting leads in and getting jobs ready for um, jobs ready for Trav to, production. to implement. Um, so, yeah, I need work on how to train others. That's my um, biggest problem because I'm just getting absolute smash. Because your time frame to create a job for a jobman's like, oh, uh, it's, it's, it's three, it's like threefold. Like, what used to take me, say, if I had a full house and that used to take me a full day to get out, I'll knock the full house out in two, two and a half hours, it's done. So, um, and I know it's all right. There's definitely no way that I've stuffed anything up. It's it's there. I haven't missed anything. Um, well, we haven't gone too crazy with measurements and KPIs yet, but you mentioned a measurement that's probably the most important one at the beginning of this conversation where now we're at a point where the results of your quoting is showing up in your financials and now you're making profit. Yeah. Right? So that tight quoting system is now paying dividends on the balance sheet. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Cool. Yeah. So I think we, we also implemented it um, with the money side of the business. So we know that at the end of our GST, our super, everything's in a totally separate account. Um, that gets taken out of there each week and put into another account. So we know we always know that we don't have that issue at all anymore. Yeah, um, we've got pretty much a spending account and we've got a savings account now, um, which we never ever have had that. Um, and just by doing that, the our savings is like to give you an idea we had our balloon payment of 115,000 for our um machine machine was due in may um the bank asked me in march whether i'd like to refinance it i thought oh, we'll keep the money in the business we'll just refinance it over two years uh so we had to just give our financials that was all cleared up and they said in may we'll give you a call back and just gets you to sign off on it. Anyway, the bank, as banks are, they didn't call me and they just took the 115000 out of the account. Now, once upon a time, that would have been deadly for our business because we just wouldn't have had the, the cash flow to cover it. But as we had the money to cover it and we actually just paid the debt down. We didn't worry about it. So, you know, pretty much the business is fully debt-free other than two vehicles now which is awesome yeah and they're, that's odd. and their uh, depreciation tax value anyway so yeah i mean it's done it's done we feel good we're debt free so yeah um, and and look let's let this is a a, a a safe group this is not a job man love fest we know that there has been issues like you guys will put up your hand well and truly and say it hasn't been easy you know there's been there's been some struggles and you've got some very specific ways as to how you wanted to do things that hasn't always met with the job man way of doing things. But the fact that you guys have got the dedication to make it work and keep pushing through it really is the reason that you're getting the results you're getting because you just keep, you keep taking steps forward. And uh, you know, that's, that's to be applauded, I think, because a lot of people get stuck. I think that's the biggest thing you need to, with um, Jobman, somebody's got to champion it um, and somebody's got to keep pushing it. Um, and quite often, it can be quite difficult for the bosses to um, be the only ones pushing it all the time. You really need someone mm -hmm. within your business. And I mean, we've got a, um, a, a lady at, in our business, which that is pretty much one of her major roles is making sure that's running. And, yeah. Um, if Jobman's not perfect, I can tell you that right now, um, because every business is different the way that they run it. Yeah. Um, so, but there there are ways of working around it. Some some of the ways are quite counterintuitive because we talk about lean manufacturing. If any other cabinet maker said to me, "What's the first thing that I'd do?" First thing would be put Jobman in now. Definitely. It's, yeah. Uh, Certainly, if you're at the size you are now, absolutely. 
get your quoting through Jobman. Yeah. yeah. You need to go from start to finish. So when you look to the next six to 12 months, what are the things that you need to be working on right now in that sort of future look forward? What are the, what are the things we're, we're needing to help you get over right now? For me personally, my, my main goal is to have someone quoting for me. So recruitment, bringing in the right person, putting in a strategy. Uh, I, I, hope, I hope I've got the right person. Yeah. Uh, and if I don't, then, yeah, bring in another person to, yeah. to do it. Um, yeah, that's, that's my main goal is to clear the quoting out of my side. It's, yeah, I'm wasting my hours quoting. Jobs. Yeah, so you're getting out of here and you're moving up to here. That's the goal, yeah. Yeah, yeah, very good. Travis, how about you? What are the what are the main hurdles in front of you right now? Yeah, I feel through a, through the production sense, it's a it's a staffing thing. Um, we've got a pretty good run of run of guys out there, but just with the lean implementation, a few sub assembly areas sort of like it's, we've we put a, a labour hire guy on this week, um, who's had a really sensational week to to start off. Seems to be really switched on um, as an assembler. Um, so you're not trade qualified, but in those sub-assembly areas, we're sort of just just gaining a bit of traction. I just um, want to pause you for a second there. Did you just say he's sensational, he's not trade qualified? Yeah. yeah. Can I can I use that in a snippet somewhere? Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> so he it's it's, he, it's one of those conversations I have far too often about, you know, an assembler, you know, and whether they're trade qualified or not. He's he's organized, he's he asks minimal questions. He just picks it up. You know, every every cabinet making shop's different, but yeah, yeah he's, he's he's been really good. He's really organised. He's your work um, isn't that simple, so he's he's got to be pretty switched on. You know, it's not like you're yeah. just pumping. But up. The thing is, any any of those sub assemblies or anything, we don't feel now that you need a qualified person on there. Not right. with cabinet vision. Um, the product coming off the machine is easy enough for those guys to do. It's when it comes to detailed joinery, you know, um, that's where you need a proper person. You pay a proper person a proper wage, a good wage to produce quality joinery in the end, which is, you know, like curve constructions and all those type of things where we're not going to get labourers to do that and we don't want yeah. them to do that. Well, the right skill in the right place, right? Yeah, yeah. Definitely. And of course, you know, your installation work. Now you don't actually do a lot of the installs, do you? Yeah. Yeah. We've got sort of two teams each day going out. Okay. Uh, yeah. And that's really where the skill needs to be, right? Because if that's not right there, then you don't get paid and job doesn't get finished. And Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's probably my biggest hurdle over the, the next three to six months would be just bringing on the right guys in the right spots, just so we can see some of this lean. Like, yeah, the factory set out really well for, you know, we've got these sub assemblies in place. We just need the, the right guys in them now so we can see it all actually coming together, hopefully. And again, hopefully, hopefully next week would be the first week that we've actually got guys, enough guys manned in those areas to, yeah. to start to see something. So it's pretty exciting. That wasn't going to be this week, but we've had a bit of a tummy bug go through here and, I think we lost about 120 labour hours this week through sick days. So um, it's going around, that's for sure. Start, yeah. But yeah, so next week we should have full crew on board. And um, yeah, it'll be exciting to see see that sort of that for more basic joinery just progress through the factory. Well, it's just it's just so awesome to see. So what I thought I'd do right now, just in the uh, conscious of time, I thought I'd just open the floor. Um, Bob, Mario, Chris. Um, would you like to fire some questions or comments or abuse at these guys? Um, yeah, what was, um, so with the introduction of Lane for you boys, are you getting any kickback from your long, longer term staff? Is everyone taking on board? Is, have you sort of felt like you've had any kickback at all? Um, not necessarily kickback, but until they, like we bring it up in meetings and toolboxes, but until they can physically see how it works and, and you know, the whys as to what happens and the result, it's, it's, it was hard to get some of the guys over the line. It wasn't, it wasn't a huge kickback, but 
they just couldn't couldn't sort of forecast their minds ahead to see, all right, yeah, this is beneficial because they know a way that they do things. So they think, well, that way works. But when you start to piece all the parts together, um, we've got a foreman out there who's, who's got a pretty good understanding on, on the flow of stuff as well. So I work really hard with him to, to get this stuff moving, but it's, it's, it's just getting, getting the guys there all working in unison through CNC, edger, assembly, door and drawer stations. And hopefully with, with guys man there, they'll be like, oh yeah, well, we can, we can turn these projects around in a day, two days rather than three, yeah. four, five days. So I think it's yeah. always important Great to weekend. make sure you get the alpha. Yeah. If you get him on board, the rest just follow. That's yeah. Um, yeah, so like that guy that uh, Mark, Mark, we got that guy and an installer, which are the alphas in the, the group. Um, they don't see each other too much, which is good too. Um, okay. But both of those guys are on board. So it just flows through the rest of it. Yeah. I don't know if you guys have ever seen that, that video clip of that drunk dancing guy at a music festival on the side of a mountain dancing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's actually a really interesting story like behind that. He, he's obviously in his zone, right? He doesn't take any risks. He knows he's having a good time. The guy that took the risk was the first follower. And that's the message in that little story. So what Mick has just said is you need, like when we come into a business, we don't take any risks because we know if you do this stuff, it'll work. For us, it's not risky. It's risky for the first person in your business to step out of that group and then become that alpha and, and and become the first follower because they're going to buck the trend in many cases. And when you do have that person, like Mick was saying, things go pretty quickly. And just small little steps, you know, with anything, so, you know, with job mode and all that type of stuff, it's got to be broken down into what's the most important thing that you want to sort out? How do we get that sorted out first like our most important thing was quoting with jobman mm. to get sorted out so that had to be the initial driver what what we had to do and i i know at the time i knew with in the business that was the most important thing and like with lean you know there might be something which is really a bottleneck within the business that has to be the priority but it needs to be pulled back as you know what's one part that we can do this week and then what's one part next week. I remember when we had that, you know, we had a bit of a light bulb moment, didn't we, Mick, where I actually showed you bringing in a quote from, from, um, from cabinet vision. Yeah. yeah. And then it aligned those products. That was a real light bulb moment, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 So and certainly probably, are, I, I think know, the holdup was that Jobman was trying to get you to do step five first. <laughs> we, we were focusing on step one. That's exactly, yeah. Yeah. And once once we actually did did that, I remember the next day Bruce was gone and I had a full house done in yeah. you know, three or four hours and I couldn't believe it. I just Yeah, started, that was um, a really um, cool moment. I'll, I always remember that. It was like yeah. silence for a few minutes. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Nick, can I ask, with, with Jobman, do you check your your job man quote against the final drawings just to sort of make sure they marry up? Like if people make I, adjustments? I personally don't, but Trav does. Um, pretty much once it's, once I turn it into a job, I'm already about two months advanced to that. So we found as a partnership in business was, I wasn't going to get involved in his stuff and he wasn't going to get involved. We're there for support and that's it. So pretty much once it's left my room to a certain extent, as soon as I've created that as a job, Travi then runs. So, so I, yeah, I, I do review it, Ario. Um, and if there is something that I'm not sure of <laughs> through the production side, yeah, we will, we will then discuss it and, you know, just to clarify it, but, I think, yeah, the good thing with Jobman and knowing the way that Mick quotes is I then look at the same architect plans or, or whatever we're looking, you know, whatever we're, we're working from and I can see what items he's brought in to, you know, to build that up. Um, and then we use that as a, as a basis of our, you know, our production. 
to do up our shop drawing. So, yeah, there's, there's little changes here and there and we don't sort of stress or, or sweat on those, you know, those small changes throughout the, the proofing process unless they're, unless they're major, but if they're, they're still sort of minor, we don't go, oh, we're going we're gonna to reprice that, you know. We'll just keep things moving through, you know. You have little wins here and there, wins and losses, but, yeah. Do you use drawings as part of your sales process? Like, do you... How, how do you guys sort of run that's, the brand? That's where we're slightly different. Um, we pretty much only deal with the um, builder who's had architect drawings already sent to us. So, um, and pretty much we now tell our anybody other than those people that want us to do work, you need to provide us a drawing, uh, whether that's a sketch or anything. We... I don't, myself, I don't want to get involved in drawing something and spending a whole heap of time drafting something up for somebody before I actually give them a prize. I, I want them to give me some type of drawing and then, which means they're um, somewhat engaged in the process. Um, so if they give me a drawing, I'll price it up. And if it's too high, I've only wasted an hour or so, you know, like, but if I've got to go and design it and all that type of stuff, I could waste four or five hours for a tie kicker and not interested in that now. We sort of don't class ourselves as, as designers. So, and if, you know, if someone's, you know, if there's a contact that we know, they sort of ask for something, you know, we might, we might help them out, but yeah, most of the work, you know, is, it comes to us as a, structured yeah. drawing of some sort it's yeah. a little bit like your work isn't it chris where you you get a lot of architects drawings but you do get stuck into the design of it to a degree too don't you yeah it's 100 percent. we do exactly the same so what, what you've been talking about for the last 30 minutes is yeah just uh seems, seems pretty true mm -hmm. um with everything you've said uh, so far so i can very relatable yeah well you'd know mate it's, it's just takes so long trying to Keep everybody happy. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot easier if they just give you the drawing and yeah, hundred percent. And that's sort of what I like about doing it. It's it's uh, there's but you get to make stuff that you'd never dream of designing yourourself. So yeah, um, it, that's the enjoyable enjoyable part. You, you're solving a problem for for someone else, and um, yeah, it's yeah. Uh, and you don't have to you don't have to think too hard. You just got to make it make it work. You know, definitely. So, yeah. Oh, Mick and Travis, can you guys hear me? Yes. yes. Yep. Okay. Are you guys uh, utilizing your purchase orders through Jobman? Are you doing all your purchasing? Yeah. Raw, raw materials and um, then generating a purchase order through there? Yes, 100%. Yep. So as of the yeah, start of um, first day back this year, that was our, our push was yep. to, mm. to send all purchase orders out of, out of Jobman. Um, and yeah, probably took a week or two to to, to get the hang of it. And, and yeah, Jobman's just just so much better. Yeah. 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 We're finding the same thing. We started a few weeks ago pushing all our purchase orders through. Yeah. We have found it to be exceptionally time consuming because of course you're straddling your old system as well yep. as the new system and trying to learn the new system. But I can see, I can certainly see the potential benefits in time saving and to be able to track where your goods are. So we just, we just made a date, like our date was the first day that we were back at work, that yeah. Yeah. You know, there was no double handling. It was, that's the way we're going. Just yeah. turn it off like it doesn't exist. Yeah, Pretty it's hundred percent what we did and we were forced into just sending send purchase orders out. And we found, well, like my quickest is like, yeah, you build up your library of materials. So creating a, the availability chart items has that, starts to grow you spend the time to get them in right but like yeah. now certain ones you know when we've got you know ordering those products again it's it's just so much quicker um, it is yeah so and again before i send an order if it's not a an aci item i'll add it as an aci item because hmm. um, it's just the benefit it is is greater down the track yeah that, that in essence is is the same as us and, and we do find that while we've got a fairly substantial list of items in our availability chart, of course, inevitably in every job, there's something that you, you need to stop 
and add that to your availability chart so you can bring it into your purchase order. Yes, there's still, you know, like most of the stuff that we do use is similar stuff all the time. So, you know, it might seem like a tedious and hard task now, but look at it at Christmas and it's a totally different story. You know, it's not an issue because you have put in the groundwork and in any, any, you know, program, you've got to put groundwork in to, yeah. 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 So availability chart items are, you know, just as important as all of it. It's, that's, yeah. yeah. And making sure that the, the way that it is written is written the same every time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But, um, I've got a question for you, Travis. When we started looking at your factory and the flow in your factory, we made some pretty significant uh, lead time decreases. Yep. Um, can you talk a little bit about that? Like what specifically in the sequencing or uh, what, what we did had a significant impact on things in the business? So, yeah, one of them would be not setting up every single job. <laughs> okay. So a lot of the, the more straightforward joinery runs we're putting obviously a lot more faith into what we're sending off cabinet vision yeah um it gets assembled goes straight into our dispatch so we definitely save a lot of time there um sending two pack off as well if it doesn't need to be put together in some way shape or form we'll go off to the painter you know get cut first get prepped up off to the painter and then we'll try and match that up to the carcasses coming through in the coming weeks um, rather than setting up a job fully, screwing it together, then it all going off to the to the paint shop. And then probably over the last sort of month, the real exciting stuff that I'm finding is the the smaller batch lots going through the through the, to the CNC. So I'll I'll batch up my colour board um, mm. together. I'll also be running my draw parts and kick parts. Um, separately so that comes through first and then we'll run our, our carcass material into smaller smaller areas so that we're we're using less carts around the factory and we're trying to get that flow of um, from the cnc a little buffer table to the edge up then onto some some shelving right before we start to assemble assemble cupboards so that's sort of part of the lean manufacturing smaller batch lots is yeah is where we're sort of really focusing at the moment. And we don't actually, like, we look at it and I, I do, I, I, you know, maybe split it up into a bigger job into three carcass lots. We may use one extra sheet of carcass if that yeah. over over that lot on a, on a job that's got a good optimization. So, you know, one sheet of carcass to to having a job go through really smoothly. Is, yeah, days, days and days with the labor savings is, is yeah, it's a no brainer. Yeah. I think the other thing that we, we've we done is we have like all the boys start at six o'clock except for one guy who starts at five. Okay. And that bloke does recuts from the previous day or anything that the site boys have come back at the end of the day to tell us that they need uh, to make sure that the machines aren't getting interrupted with recuts and little bits and pieces because you've got buffer zones, you've got that time to get those recuts done. Yep. So we don't shut machines down during the day, during its normal eight hour day, it does not get shut down to do a recut. That gets done between five and six o'clock in the morning. That, yeah, that, that works sensationally for us as well. Yeah. It's, um, cause yeah, again, chopping and changing on the machine just, yeah. Just takes up so much time and it's just that it, it, it takes up time and it's just lost momentum yeah and when we when we talk about smaller batch lots ultimately the holy grail is one piece flow yeah and if we keep on the journey we arrive at one piece flow and it looks even different to how your factory looks now not that it's bad it's just that that ultimate level of progression and it's that's <laughs> when it gets hard right how you get to that point yeah Mitt, Travis, thanks for that. That's, it's just really, really awesome for you guys to open up and, and share that with everyone.